All right, it's so my first day back. We are getting fuel here at the Petro, and it's already turning out to be a shit show, right? So this morning, I went to go pick up my trailer. They switched the security system at the storage unit, so it's like, it wouldn't let me in. So I had to jump the gate just to steal back my own trailer, which is bull. I tried calling nothing, so had to jump the gate. Nothing I could do about it. You know, it's my equipment. It's been 24 hours since I, that's why I leased there. And then this morning, I can't get into there because it's frozen. So I guess we're just gonna have to go off of the auxiliary fuel tank. So I'll fill that up and then we'll be headed out to the Copart in Pittsburgh. So all tires look good. Everything's good. We'll get to try out the new new tires. Hopefully no blowouts today. But yeah, so it, it is turning out to be a shit show our first day back. But this is uh, what you got to expect. Things happen. At least we're getting the truck warmed up. It can sit here and idle and give me some heat and then we'll lose it when we start driving. 4.58 for diesel. That's nuts. All right, I got 1,122 miles out of that tank, which actually isn't that bad because I've been thinking this thing's been getting horrible mileage and it actually, it, it's not bad. So, I filled up the big tank. I'm gonna let it, you know, trickle down into the small tank. We'll get rolling and it looks like 534. So I kind of screwed my logbook up a little bit um, because it was like, the, you do it in 15 minute increments and I left this morning at like, I forget what time it was, like 5.15, but it's only like eight minutes away. So I'm trying to like get a little bit of my time back. I don't know, playing with these logs is kind of stupid. but So it says we'll be there at 9.01, check back there. And we don't have to be there till 10. I booked my appointment for 10 and I'm glad I did. I was gonna book it for nine. Every time you go to um, book an appointment at Copart, book one for an hour after you think you're gonna need it because this is the second time I've done that and it's paid off. All right, we're about 11 minutes inbound, 10 minutes now inbound. So I guess we got one more toll left, uh, about eight and a half miles. We got three to pick up. So today, um, it started off pretty eventful, pretty bullshit. And now everything's been going smoothly. So I'm gonna assume when I pick up, everything should go back downhill. You guys can see there that the alternator gauge is not working, but we do have power. So that's because I didn't hook the two, like I just wired it up so that it would work um, with the voltage regulator. The two wires that keep breaking off, I'm just gonna hook those right to the battery. All that I need, those were basically exciter wires for the factory ECU, but if those aren't hooked up, it won't read on the gauge. So like I said, I'm gonna go through and rewire all that. I'm not super worried about it right now. Um, it does suck not knowing if it's charging or not, but I've been driving all day pretty much and everything still works, so I'm just gonna go ahead and assume it's still charging, which I can verify with a multimeter at any time. Most cars don't even have a, a voltage gauge anyway, so it's not a super big deal. I will get it fixed because it does bother me not having a gauge working. All right, we're here early, which not a bad thing, but I scheduled it for 10 even though I thought I would be here at nine because last time, I think I scheduled an appointment for, oh man, because I had to make a drop off in the morning and I was like, oh, I'll be there at eight. But I scheduled my co-part for like a while out because I knew I was having truck issues. And it just, I would rather be a little early than late, even though it is an hour. Um, they said my estimated wait time is like 25 minutes. So I was supposed to pick up at 10, I get here at nine, if I have to actually wait 25 minutes to get my stuff, that's not bad. And, you know, it is what it is. I'll take some off-duty time, just sit here, chill, you know, mind my own business. And looks like they do have quite a bit of trucks here. So, pretty cool. I um, wanted to let you guys know, so something I noticed about the, you guys see here, the SUPTIG. I've been telling you about this battery pack. Absolutely love the thing because it actually makes my GoPro a lot more convenient. Um, one thing I did notice about it is if you need, oh, who's that is? If you need to charge it, and you have anything else plugged in next to it, it will not charge completely. It will not. It, most of the time, it won't charge at all. It seems like it'll charge like one bar overnight, but if you put it on its own separate outlet, it, it'll charge fully. So it's really weird. I don't understand what it is with that. But if that's the only drawback, 
I just plug it in in the kitchen at night and get a full charge. This morning I plugged it in where the truck was plugged in and kind of screwed up. So it was only at like one or, uh, looks like it's at one or two, which isn't a big deal because I can use the camera to film today. But I had my first oopsie yesterday with the cord on the truck. You know how I plugged my truck in overnight. I ended up driving away with the cord plugged in this morning. Um, I unplugged it from the house, but I went to drive away and my fiance, I was like, I was wondering why the plug was in the yard this morning and it was like thrown all over the place. And my fiance said, yeah, someone must have been messing with it. It was tied around my tire and this and that. I was like, bet you I forgot to unplug it. So I forgot to unplug it and it caught on her tire and unplugged it from the truck for me. So whoopsie, I've never done that before in the years I've been plugging my truck in. I always come out and I see it and I plug unplug it. Goes to show you if you're in a hurry, don't do that. I had to go to court, so I'm like, it was, yeah, I was more focused on that, but not a big deal. I unplugged it this morning and yeah, I always throw it in the yard and whatnot, so. All right, so we're sitting here letting her build some heat. Let this guy come through. I got all of the straps off, everything. That's a good looking truck. I like those car haulers, and I didn't realize that they have wider axles in the front until after watching Greg Alberala's video of him doing his. So while this pig's idling in the background, I wanted to let you guys know that if you get on Kaufman's website and you look at this trailer here, it's actually rated at 14.2K. And that's a triple axle. Apparently they do that with the 43 footers and then the 36 footers are actually 18K, even though they have triple axles. So from the factory, this is only a 14.2K rated trailer. They did put an 18K on this one, but if I ever had a problem with saying, hey, this trailer's derated and an officer tried to argue it, you can look it up right on their site. These trailers, I guess, um, now that I realize, these trailers are built different than an actual freight trailer. So I guess that's why they do that, but the wedges are still rated at 21,000, so. I don't know, I'd rather have the full 21,000 rated trailer, but whatever. I went to pull in here this morning um, obviously at 9 o'clock, it's 9.15. You guys can see up there, see that, like, where cars are coming from right there. That's a blind corner. I went to pull in. I mean, there was nobody coming. I go to pull in. Here comes a semi. I don't know if he was loaded or not, but he did have a, he had a trailer on him. And I'm like, oh shit. So I, like, quick gunned it. Because obviously it's a blind corner. I can't see the guy. I didn't see him when I made the turn. I looked, I'm literally looking at it, making the turn as I'm looking. And then, oh shit, here it comes, blind corner. So I pull in and the truck starts going sideways. I'm giving it throttle and shit. And it's like, oh boy, like this whole lot is icy as all hell. And I'm like, I would have pulled in a lot slower, but I saw the guy and I'm like, ah, uh, yeah, I don't want to get hit by that. I'd rather take the ice. So I did that. Um, these guys are getting the snow off the top of their vehicles. Make sure if you're a car hauler or any commercial vehicle, you get all of the snow off of any of the vehicles that you are hauling. If you do not, and you pull into a scale house, that is not just a DOT violation, that's federal. You can get in some serious shit for that. Um, I, they said something to me about it at the New Jersey scale house. He didn't get me for it because he's like, I understand, you know, it's not a lot, but he said, make sure you do it. So I actually took the time to clean them off while I was there. I'm like, I didn't realize that there was any on it. It was dark when I was doing my pre-trip, so it's like, I, I didn't really notice, but it is what it is. Um, just be mindful of that. You can get in some serious shit. Like this dude's up here, like he, this guy's doing it right. So props to that guy. For one, not only safety, but two, keeping yourself out of some shit. Cause DOT will, if, if they're in a bad enough mood, they will screw with you. All right, not every day Copart makes my life easy, but wow, they made my life easy today. I guess he owes like 15 bucks on it and they're international, so they only take cash. And they're like, we'll just let you take them. It's like, okay, cool. So we've got cars coming and we'll have a full trailer today. That'll be nice.
Perfect. That's one. You guys can see the clear, dude, he got it so perfect. That is perfect. Move these, put these off to the side for the next one. I'm not sure which one he's gonna bring next, but dude, he has like so, it's so close. And getting rid of this gate bought me some inches, so. That is awesome, all right. I gotta figure out which cars I have next, because I want the heaviest one in the back, backwards. All right, so I have a Subaru Legacy and a Cherokee. I want the Cherokee on the back, and the Legacy, since it's just a four-door car, we'll put that in the middle, really test out these axles make sure we don't break any bolts today looks like they're all back there so sweet which I'm thinking about these I'm gonna see how these hold up these bolts that we put in and we might switch back to the factory ones or buy the uh, the new greasable ones Pretty smashed. A lot of snow on her. Snow will also take off weight, so if you're trying to stay under, get it. This dude knows what he's doing. I like this guy, this operator. Close as possible. This way, right there. Perfect. All right. Perfect. Dude knows what he's doing. Give this guy a raise. We'll get the last one on here and. Strap him down. There she is. I don't care if he puts it on backwards or forwards. Okay, we'll have him put it on backwards. Ice skating rink here. Sweet. Get her put on backwards. He gave me... I, I mean, I could move this one up like two more inches maybe. But I think we'll have plenty of room. Especially for a Jeep like this. I think we'll have room. Look at that thing right there. Look at him go. All right, and so we are, I'll get him strapped down. We'll go back in and get our paperwork because she said she's gonna work on it for me. We'll get the snow cleaned off and we're gonna go pick up a stack for the truck, so. All right, our appointment was for 10. We're all loaded up before 10. It's not even 10 o'clock yet. So we'll get all this snow off, everything's strapped down, paperwork is all done. Like I said, get all the snow off, I'll start with the back car and work our way up. All right, if it wasn't for the fact that I had to clean all that snow off, you guys can see on the other side too. Look at that. It's all cleaned off, we're good to go. That hood's latched. All right, now we can get out of here, go pick up that stack, and we'll be headed home. So this guy, somewhere back here. Total time, we got here at nine. It's 10, 12 now, so by 10, 15, we'll be rolling. While we're waiting on cars coming, there's that blind corner. That is pretty brutal of a, hey, a semi coming down the hill. So I just gotta wait for him so I can make the wide right, and we'll be out of here now. All right, we're dropped. That was a pain in the ass. When this thing is fully loaded, I'm trying to back up that hill, you guys, I don't know if you can see the, any, where is it, any of this. This trailer just likes to drag it on the bottom. This thing is way too low for this hill. This is not like the greatest spot in the world, but let me get all that out so I don't have it flying out tomorrow. I did find the lug nut finally. 
Mm. But yeah, you can see it. It digs into the ground pretty good. So I gotta go hit this lug nut on. I just found it sitting in the spot right here. So I'll get him torqued on. Go over the rest of them. We're a little close today, but I don't think he's gonna show up for tomorrow. But it looks like, hey, we're over his way a little bit. I'd like to be over closer to this guy, but so other than that, um, we didn't get to stop and get the stack today unfortunately but not a big deal it didn't work out um so yeah i guess trailer and bearings have been great on the trip so your back door was frozen this morning so i never opened it so we'll get that get that all right so i went through the middle ones get warmer than the rest like if i feel this back one that's cold i feel this back one it's also cold. I feel this one, and it's warm. It's not hot, it's warm. So, probably gonna end up going through the middle wheel bearings again at some point. I wanna get your guys' opinion on this, because going up that hill, I had to ride the shit out of the clutch to get it to go up here, and I can smell the clutch burning. So, what's worse, burning out the clutch or jackknifing this thing to get it into the spot with three cars on it. What do you guys think? Because that's just, getting it up that hill every day, I'm gonna need a clutch if I have if I keep doing that. I'm gonna destroy this clutch. So, I don't like that. All right, so we need to go over some things because I got a message today about something. And you know how I, I made a post the other day about how, you know, they are gonna try to get rid of non-CDL hotshot eventually, okay? But apparently they made some rule changes. So apparently there's been some rule changes, okay, um, for IFTA. Now this is kind of where it used to be, I guess the, there, there used to be a thing, I don't know what the old rule was, because I remember reading this years ago about the combination having three or more axles, you have to run IFTA. It says it right here, who has to apply for IFTA? And qualified motor vehicles designed to transport people or property may require IFTA registration if they have three or more axles or have two axles and a gross vehicle or registered gross vehicle weight of 20 of more than 26,000 pounds, which is 26,001 or more, so CDL, and are used in combination that has a combined or registered gross vehicle weight of more than 20, 26,000. So again, if it's registered or gross weight. over 26,000, you need IFTA. But here they're also saying you need IFTA if you have three or more axles. I know it used to be the truck if it had three or more axles, I was pretty sure. Now it's the combination, according to what I'm reading here. I want you guys to give me your judgment on this because you still, even if your axles are over three, you can't apply for IFTA unless you're over 26,000. Basically what they're saying is you need IFTA, but you have to register at a CDL weight, 26,001 or more, and then you're required a CDL. I don't know what state this was in. I'm not gonna show like the, the violation, like the DOT numbers and all that. I'm just gonna show the violation here. IRP apportion tag or registration violation. There's no IRP for required CMB, three or more axles regardless of weight. That's weird, okay? What do you guys think of this? Because it's basically like saying, hey, if you're over three axles on your combination, you have to run IFTA. So that means, to be a non-CDL hotshot at 26,000 pounds, you can only have two axles combined. So maybe I'm misunderstanding something. I want you guys down below to do your research and due diligence and figure it out. I'm just going off of what was sent to me and I haven't had time to look this over like 100%. Uh, this is according to Keep Trucking, by the way. So this is from Keep Trucking. You need IFTA regardless of axles, but you can't, you still can't. If you even go to apply for IFTA, your combination has to be over 26,000. So basically, it sounds like if this is the case, they are trying to eliminate non-CDL hotshot in general. You need IFTA, but you can't register as a non-CDL. You have to prorate over that 26,000. It's really weird. So if this is the case, it's not a problem for me because I'll be getting a CDL here in the next, I'm trying to go for the next three months. Sometime in the next three months, I wanna go get it. Still smells like clutch burning over here, but that's 
what I want to do. So I want to be CDL. Again, why I'm getting rid of the white truck and I'm going to buy a 5500 is I would like to be good for some of these other loads. Like there's loads on here for like three Ram 25 and 3500s that I could do if I had a 5500 and a wedge or something, you know, along those lines, something really long, like a four car trailer. So I would really like to do that because the ship pays like 2,300 bucks for like 300, not even 300 miles. It was like 200 some miles, 2,300 bucks. And there was a few of them on there. It's like, man, if I could do loads like that, I could make even more. So it's like, I'm limiting myself right now by being CDL. I'd be limiting myself with that white truck. Yes, I need the money now because I kind of got to recoup like $10,000. That would be nice to put back in the account. So, and I, I, I would like to run IFTA as well because living in PA, I filled up this morning, it was like 458 for diesel. I am in a high tax state. So IFTA does nothing but benefit me because if I fill up in PA and then I drive to New Jersey, Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, Ohio, any of those areas, I'll get a, I'll get a kickback. I get a discount, super nice. So that's basically it, but I'm gonna finish the video out here. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in tomorrow's video. As always, go check out my affiliate links. If you buy anything on there, I get a kickback of it on Amazon. Also go check out uh, celsius.network. If you wanna store your crypto, get paid $100 to do it. Use my code and code HODL50 You'll, after your $400 deposit. After 30 days of that, you will get paid $100 and you get paid weekly yield interest. So you'll get your yearly, yearly interest of whatever that amount is and you'll get 150 second payments of it every week. So a lot better than a bank, tell you what. So appreciate you guys, see ya. Oh, I forgot to plug her in last night. <laughs> Yes.